I'm going to show you how to download, just in case you don't, Windows 11 and make bootable media from it because we, that's something we can do right quick. And to do that, I need a machine. I could use this machine right here. Yeah, let's just use this one. I mean, it's already built. It's already here. That way I can show you the whole screen and not just the window with OBS here. So let me get this plugged in. And here's the thing. You might say, yeah, I already know how to make a, a Windows ISO bootable media. Have you ever done it with Rufus? Because that's the secret sauce. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I have this all unplugged, so give me a second here to just plug everything back in. Just take a minute. And I'm going to show you why. So we've got power, HDMI, Ethernet, keyboard and mouse. I think we're good to go. Oh, I also found in one of the bags these little Velcro, square little Velcro stickers. It's got dust on it. But each one's like a little one inch square Velcro. And that is what we'll use to hold the little dragon on. And I'll also use that to hold the fan controller on. And I'm thinking I'll put the fan controller, the second one, down where the hard drive would go, down here by the power supply and get all those cables out of the way. So that's the final plan for this guy. Then how I'm gonna lift it, haven't figured that out yet, but we'll figure that. We'll figure that out when we'll cross that bridge when we get to it is what I'm trying to say. To make your own Windows 11 media installation, first thing you want to do is go to your browser. Now we have Edge installed on this build here, and we're going to type in down, there's my keyboard, there we go. Download Windows 11, you can see it's already filled in. And the first link that it provides you with should be from Microsoft. Pay attention to these links where they're coming from. And the second link here says download Windows 11 from Microsoft.com. It's coming from Microsoft. This is the one we want. So we click on that. And it wants to know how do you want to do that? Do you want to use the installation assistant? Well, that's if you want to upgrade your current Windows 10 or 11 to the latest version. And you don't want to wait for that to be offered in Windows Update. You can do it manually. We've already shown you how to do that. Create Windows installation media was how I was previously recommending but I no longer recommend this process. The last option is to download a disk image, an ISO image. And Windows 11 is only 64-bit. There is no 32-bit version of Windows 11. So we want to select the download. We want Windows 11. Before you begin downloading an ISO, I don't know, download now, I guess. Oh, it wants me to confirm. Select the product language, English US. Now confirm. Links are valid for 24 hours. Links expire. So you can't use my link, I guess. Verify your download. More download. So where's my download? Do I just hit 64-bit download? Yeah, there it goes. So this is a 5.4 gig download. And you can see our internet here is fast. So much better than it was in Studio B. And while that's downloading, Let's go to Rufus, R-U-F-U-S, enter. And that should result in a search taking us to rufus.ie. Oh, I guess that's in Ireland. We're going to click on that. And this is the proper website you want to be at, rufus.ie. This is a very small application that will convert your ISO image into a bootable flash drive. So this is what it looks like. There's a lot of advertising surrounding it. We estimate we can sell up to 80% of an individual's visual field before inducing seizures. So be careful on which link you want. Tap download to start. To start what? Wave browser. I don't want that. I want Rufus. This is the danger of these sites that offer free software. It's very common. Here is our download. All the way down here. And there's a Rufus 4.5, and then the P is the portable edition. Then there's a 32-bit version and an ARM, if you have an ARM Snapdragon processor. So we want this first one right here. This says tap download to start. This is an advertisement. It says add right here. It's already started. If you look up here, oh, it hasn't. <laughs> Just close this. There it is right there, Rufus 4.5. We've already downloaded Rufus and Windows 11 ISO. I'm going to close all these windows. 
because we don't need any of those open. I'm going to go to the yellow folder down here, Windows Explorer. We're going to go to our Downloads folder, and we'll see all the things we've downloaded here. Mara put uh, Battle.net on here to test the frame rates and stuff. And Chrome. And Chrome. She put Chrome on here. So these are our downloads we put on this new build so far. This is our ISO, and this is Rufus. At this point, you're going to want an 8 gig or larger USB flash drive. I recommend an 8 gig flash drive because otherwise it's just more or less wasted space for me anyway. Oh heck, you know what? We can just use the one I've already got. You know, I always pull this flash drive out. It's got my label on it. It says Windows 11. Let's just say this has 23H2 on it. I don't want to use it anymore. I want to create a new one. So I'll just overwrite the one I've got. So we'll plug that in. Any of these USB ports should be fine. All right, so that's plugged in the back. Now let's go back over to the desktop. And you'll see that opens the flash drive. Oh, no, it didn't. Is my flash drive in there? Yeah, OK, so this is my previous Windows 11. So that's OK. We can format that. So we run Rufus. These are the two files we're interested in, Rufus and Windows 11. You tell, look at the size. It's only 1.5. Uh, meg, and that is 5.6 gig. We're going to double click on Rufus and click yes. Do you want to allow Rufus to check for updates? Sure. I mean, it's up to you whether you want it to or not. And I'm going to close this out. So this is what Rufus looks like today. So it says it's assuming we want to use a 16 gig flash drive that I plugged in. It already found it. And that we're going to do a boot drive out of this, and it'll be a disk or an ISO image. Yes, that's right. Then we're going to select the image. So we click select, we go back to our downloads folder. We're, oh, we're already there. And the only ISO image we have is this one. It doesn't show us everything else in the downloads folder because those aren't images it can use. So we double click on that. And it says image option, standard Windows install. Yep. Partition scheme, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. At that point, all you have to do, after you've selected your image, you know, you start the program, you make sure your flash drive is the one you want to use, select your image, which we have the checkbox, and then hit start. Now it says these options come up. This is the part that makes Rufus superior. It says, I can see, I can tell by looking at this, that you're trying to create a Windows 11 media installation, would you like to customize the installation? So by default, this box is checked. Remove requirement for four gigs of RAM, secure boot, and TPM. This bypasses all of the unsupported hardware. I definitely don't want to do that as a professional shop. I'm not a hobbyist. This would be a terrible decision for me to make. Remove the requirement for an online Microsoft account. That is the part where you could say I don't have an internet connection without having to do the bypass NRO. So that's already doing it for you. You can already create a local account name. For example, I could say make it user. Now, every install I do isn't the same, so I don't want to do this. But you might want to set the local account up yourself. Set the regional options to the same value as this user's. You can, but to me that's not a big deal, so I leave that unchecked. Disable data collection. Skip the privacy questions. No, I don't want to skip that. Disable BitLocker automatic device encryption. Yes. So in my opinion, those are the two checkboxes that should be defaulted. I, at least one of them is defaulted, right? The remove requirement. But this whole thing about bypassing the security, it's already done for you. And all you have to do then is click OK. And then it says something else is accessing this drive. Do you want to format it? Yes. All data on this drive is going to be erased. Yes, I understand. And now down here, you'll see it's telling you what's going on, what's happening. This is the secret sauce to making your Windows 11 disk without having to manu manually follow some tech scripting and coding to manipulate yours in a custom way that you could get wrong. This will get it right every time, and it's free. Rufus is completely free. Windows 11 is also free. Activation is optional. You cannot personalize Windows without activation, but otherwise it runs fine. So when I say I can't personalize it, I can't choose wallpaper. 
If I go in and try and change the wallpaper, it says you need to activate Windows for that. But by installing the Microsoft Bing wallpaper, it took it over. So I did that. So there are just personalizations to Windows that become available when you activate it. Otherwise, you can run it indefinitely for free, and you'll just have this annoying activate Windows down here. So is Windows free? Yes, it is. And optionally, if you want to pay for a license to get that personalization, you can. And if you want to save a lot of money on it, buy it from VIP CDK deals and use the coupon code CARRY for 30% off. And those are guaranteed that those are legal keys. You don't believe me? Ask Microsoft. Those are 100% legal license keys. They are guaranteed to work. They have great support, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they've been selling these license keys for like a decade and a half, over a decade. So clearly if this was something shady or illegal, Microsoft is well aware of it. Microsoft has offices in countries all over the world with lawyers and people to enforce the rules. There's a lot of people who don't understand how licensing works. And, uh, you know, they make a lot of false claims and they provide no evidence. I guarantee these keys are legal. I guarantee these keys will work. They also offer the same guarantee. If you have any problem, you contact their customer service and they will make it right. And if for any reason they don't, in a rare, 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 you know, situation, something's, you know, you're not getting satisfaction, you reach out to me personally and the buck stops with me. I will make it right every time. I shouldn't have to, but I wouldn't promote something I don't use myself. And that's how firmly I believe in it. I put my own money on the line. All right, so this is already done. We're going to hit close. Now, in theory, if we reboot this to the flash drive, let's see if it starts a Windows uh, 11 install. So what I have to do, I think, I don't know, is it F12 on this board? We want to get to our boot options. So one way I can do that is um, I'll start hitting delete to go into the BIOS. So I'm pressing delete on the keyboard over and over and over right now. And I'm waiting for the post, the power on self test screen, which is starting now. This is really where you need to start hitting delete. I was hitting it a bit early, but just keep pressing it. And eventually, <laughs> I think I got it. We get into the BIOS. And I'm going to go over to motherboard settings. Or save and exit. Yeah, so under settings and then motherboard settings and so on. And an MSI BIOS, it's a little hard to find. But just the boot override, just this one-time boot override, let's boot to the SanDisk Extreme. And that should be our brand new media that we just created that quickly. And we can reuse this flash drive endlessly. Just label it as your Windows 11 24H2 and stick it in a drawer, and there you go. Already ready to roll. How cool is that? Completely for free. And that's today's lesson from Uncle Kerry.